up friends welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi my name is Jesse, also known as miss cherry and today oh my gosh i'm so excited to be filming this video because i can't wait to share with you all of the amazing fun things and stories and mementos that i got from this incredible incredible trip that i just went on with adventures by disney so my best friend and her mom and i often take girls trips together and this year we decided it was gonna be the ultimate bucket list trip. And um, my best friend Nikki, who also has a channel, I'll link her channel down below. Um, she and I have been best friends since we were eight years old. And um, her mom is like a second mom to me. And so when we travel together, it's just like traveling with family, right? And so we are all big Disney fans and this trip sounded so amazing and it did not disappoint. I would actually go on this trip again. I loved it so much. So it's fully guided by Adventures by Disney, which is a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Companies. And it's for Southern California. And so I'm going to try to remember all the things that we did because I should have items from all of the different places that we went. So we started out in Hollywood and we went to the El Capitan Theater and also the Ghirardelli, Ghirardelli, there we go, chocolate shop, ice cream shop, Sunday shop, chocolate shop. Anyway, it's a Disney Studios store Hollywood that has a Ghirardelli's inside of it that we went to the TCL Chinese Theater, which was super cool. And we did backstage on at El Capitan and at TCL, which was incredible. Then we went to Jim Henson Studios. We went to Tam O'Shanter, one of Walt and his Imagineers favorite places to eat. And a lot of milestones for Walt Disney Studios are still celebrated at Tam O'Shanter, which is super cool. We called him Tim Shatner in the vlogs, just so you know. And by him, I mean the restaurant. Um, it was a whole thing. It was so silly. And then we went to Walt Disney Studios. Then we went to Walt Disney Imagineering. And then we had a VIP at Disneyland and a four day park hopper and stayed at the Grand Californian. Holy moly, was it amazing. I cannot wait to share the vlogs. The vlogs are coming very soon. But first we gotta get through this haul. You gotta see all the goodies that went along with this trip because it is epic. So let's go ahead and get started. Everything should be in categories. I'm going to do my best to tell you how much everything was. And let's do this, guys. It's going to be a long one. You may want to drink and a snack. Let's start with freebies. So a lot of these are kind of like mementos and things. I just felt this trip was so very special that I needed to save a lot of the little mementos and things for me to have. I have a little, um, metal lunchbox that I keep all of my maps and all of my specialty things in. And here is my Disney 100 ticket for Disneyland. I just thought it was so cool. I did get Mickey. It is a four day park hopper that was included. And I accidentally stole this. This was still in my wallet when I got home. <laughs> it's the Grand Californian key card. Whoopsie doopsie. That was not intentional. And then we got the cutest little dining credit gift card. And I thought Chef Mickey juggling all of those of fruits and vegetables was absolutely adorable. And so I went ahead and saved that. I probably don't need to, but I just thought it was so cute. So as I mentioned, we did go to the El Capitan Theater. So we did a full backstage tour of the El Capitan. Capitan Theater. However, on one of the first nights, we got let out to have an evening by ourselves. So what we decided to do was go watch a movie at the El Capitan Theater. Unfortunately, we had missed Wish by just a few days, but we did get to go see the Marvels and the lovely gentleman that was at the front of the ticket booth at El Capitan scanned our barcode that was on my phone because I, I had purchased tickets online. I wanted to make sure that we had the opportunity to get in because um, I was a little concerned about that. I didn't really need to be looking back, but I did ask him, I'm like, do you think there's any way that you can print a ticket like as a memento for us? And he goes, we're not really supposed to, but I'm going to make an exception because it seems like it would mean a lot. And I thought that that was like, oh, it just my heart. It was so sweet. So here is 
the El Capitan theater ticket and it is stunning. This was super special to me. This is the Walt Disney Company guest badge and it has my name on it. It also has the security barcode and information and this is what we had to wear when we went to Walt Disney Studios and I just thought it was so very cool. Now if you've seen my trip announcement video this will look familiar. However I wanted to show this to you guys because Nikki and Terry made such a beautiful cutout of my name on the Cricut that matches the Disney 100 holographic um, theme for this year. And oh my goodness, this name tag sparkled in the sunshine. And Nikki, Terry, and I got so many compliments from so many people. People were just loving this. So thank you, Nikki and Terry, for making this for me. I appreciate it so much. Next, we ate at two character dining experiences that were included with our tour. We ate at Goofy's, like, <laughs> Goofy's Kitchen. And so you get a free button. And also, we got to eat at Plaza Inn. So there are our two buttons from the two character dining experiences. Two really sweet items that were given to us by our tour guide. So on the first night, there is a welcome dinner. And during that welcome dinner, they talk about the little man of Disneyland, which is a man that lives in Adventureland. His little hut or house is in the tree next to the lightning lane at Indiana Jones. And so there's this whole lore around him. You can look it up online, but they came out with an updated little golden book that is The Little Man of Disneyland, and it features all of the newer rides. They have another iteration of this book that is the original, which actually I would really like to find because I thought it would be neat to be able to have this as um, a memento for this trip. And... What was so sweet about this was we were one of the only parties that weren't living together. And so Nikki, Terry, and I all three have different addresses, different homes. I live in Alaska. They live in Kansas. The tour guides, Michael and Sammy, realized that right away. And they said, we're going to get you guys each individual little golden book so you can have them, which was so sweet. They didn't have to do that for us, but... They chose to, which was super duper nice. And I just want to show a couple pages of this book because it is so beautiful. So here is the, um, here is Storybook Land. How beautiful is that? And then you've got Mickey riding the ride, which is so cute with the little man of Disneyland, by the way. And here is the little man of Disneyland. He looks like a little leprechaun. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. He's riding on the top of a balloon. Such a cute little story and I can't wait to get the original iteration of it so I can read that as well. But thank you, Michael and Sammy, for the sweet gift. We do appreciate that we were able to each take one. The next item was given to us by Michael and Sammy. On one of the days that we were there, we got to open Disneyland, like actually go inside the park before anyone. It was incredible. I got to vlog the whole thing. It was so surreal. Like I've never seen Disneyland quite like that before. I have run a Tinkle Tinkerbell half marathon back in 2017, but there was still a lot of crowds, right? And so this was just so, so different. And so they stood us in front of the castle and they said, today you guys are going to get to open Fantasyland just like the Mouseketeers did on July 17th, 1955. And then they handed us each, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm getting emotional. <sighs> they handed us each a traditional Disneyland Mouseketeer hat. Now these are very fragile and I am so very thankful I carried this on and I was so careful with this hat and luckily it has not been damaged and I'm so, so thankful. And then here is the inside. It says leader of the club and it has uh, Mickey Mouse and the traditional um, Mouseketeer emblem. Such a cool memory and moment attached to this. We all placed these on our heads and got photos, a group photo in front of the castle specifically, and then individual photos if we wanted. And I will show you that picture right there. It was so 
cool. And then we got to, after we did that, we got to walk through the castle and be the first people to set foot in Disneyland that day. We opened Peter Pan's flight and then opened Pinocchio's right after. I will never forget that morning. Never. The next category is the Funko store. I had never been to the Funko store in Los Angeles and oh my gosh, it is so cool. It, if you go to LA, just go there. It was incredible. I'm not even like the biggest Funko fan, but it was just, oh my gosh, everything was so themed. They had larger than life everything, larger than life Funkos in different scenes. They had an entire shipwreck with Ariel, Sebastian, and Flounder, and then Ursula kind of looming over them. They had a giant sorcerer, Mickey. They had a giant Hagrid. It was so, so very cool. I cannot suggest it enough. I got three items from the Funko store, and then I also got a ton of Biddy Pops, which I got so many, I'm not gonna show you. I did get most all of the Princess collection, but that's gonna be something that I'm gonna put up on my Instagram, just cause it'll be a little bit easier. I wanna start with this, but I have to tell you, it did not travel well and it broke, and I'm so disappointed because I really liked this, and I don't know what to do about it. I'm probably gonna fix it, hopefully. I'm not 100% sure, but anyway, I got the Little Mermaid Lenticular pin. Now this is for their new collection for princesses. And I don't recall exactly what it's called, but what really makes me disappointed was as, I don't know, maybe as I was traveling, the lenticular came off and it adhered itself to the packaging and I couldn't get it off. And so unfortunately, <laughs> I have like a ripped back to my lenticular. So it's Ariel, it's Ariel and Eric, and then it's Eric, there we go, Eric and Ariel as statue and mermaid form. So that's a lenticular that's supposed to go in a stunning pin. I am a huge Little Mermaid fan. And so my largest pin collection is Little Mermaid pins. And I have a very specific area of my pin board for pink dress and also for wedding. And this would go perfectly in the center of both of them. I'm just so afraid if I place any sort of glue on this that it might seep through the paper backing of the lenticular. If you have any suggestions, I would love to know if you have any suggestions. For now, I'm just gonna keep it in its box and keep it safe. Um, it was $24 and it's in a uh, limited edition of 1800. Mm, I'm so sad about that. This item that I bought needs to come out of the packaging because it's got this like plastic wrapping on the outside. I bought this because I have a notebook that I keep on my desk at work where I write down my top three things that I want to accomplish for the day and then I scratch them off as time goes on. And I thought this notebook was so beautiful. This is for their Disney 100 collection and I fell in love with this collection. A lot of the items that they have, it's really hard to see how beautiful the holographic um, look to them is. It's like iridescent and white and it's like pink and blue. It's so beautiful. So you can kind of see it's like almost an ombre to pink to blue because the entire collection that has bags and wallets and different things has that beautiful like holographic background to it. Um, but I love that all of the characters are in pinks and yellows and pastels. I just think it's so fun. I love Goofy in this image and also look at these cute little tabs. But what's even better, you've gotta see this. <gasps> so it's the bigger um, image of them in their little outfit. On the other side is a Mickey head. Goof. Donald is so cute. Pluto. $15. Next, I Funkoed myself. Now, this was like the number one thing I wanted to do when we went to the Funko store. So they have this area of the Funko store where you can use these kiosks and completely customize a pop figurine, like to a T. Um, the only thing that they didn't have right was my hair color. And I just have really different hair color. I have like dirty blonde hair and they only had like ice blonde or light brown. So I went with that light brown because I thought it was closer and it does look a little bit dark. But anyway, 
here, let me take it out. I did get a, a cover for it because I wanted it to be protected. So it says, you are one of one, which is so cute. It says, Miss Cherry. And then on the side, it says, pop yourself. You are one of one. And then it says, what's your message where you can write it in on the back, which I think is so adorable. Here I am. I often wear black. I often wear tennis shoes, ripped jeans. This is like my standard. I also got to choose a little lounge fly bag, but overall I think it is a good representation of me, but it gets even better because my cat Telly is in pop form. Ah! <laughs> is that the cutest thing ever? I'm, oh my gosh. When I found out you could pop, you could do a pop with a cat, I was like, <laughs> say less say less <laughs> and so that is my Funko what was really amazing about that experience too it literally took 15 minutes to make my pop which I thought was so cool next category is the Ghirardelli is a Disney studio store Hollywood they're most famously known for their pin trading delights which is where you can get a pin of a rare character or any character I guess eating a sundae and they release three of them at a time they're very very limited and when you buy those pins you also get a free ice cream sundae or maybe it's built into the price one or the other um, they do random releases so unfortunately while we were there we didn't get any of them but I did get some cool pins and I also found the number one item that I wanted to get most while I was in Disneyland and that is this little Christmas bobble uh, candle holder and I just thought it was so beautiful it has the Disneyland castle it's this really nice bright Kelly green which I think is so lovely it's got a gold detail and ribbon on the top to make it look like it is ornament themed and a spoiler alert my background is actually ornament themed this year um, specifically all of our little pin boards are little ornaments in little categories which I thought was super fun so I'm gonna put this back on the display the El Capitan Theater as well as Ghirardelli's Disney Studio Store Hollywood are connected like literally by a door so you can walk through the um, or you used to be able to I'm not sure if they still do this you used to be able to walk between um, the store and the theater and so I got the El Capitan Ghirardelli's um, sign in pin form, which I thought was so cute. It's got Mickey and Minnie. And because we were able to go and do a backstage tour, as well as go to the movies and also visit Ghirardelli's and the Disney Studios Store Hollywood multiple times. And so I'm glad that we were able to um, get a memento for that. Now this was really fun. They had a Gus and Jacques popcorn pin. And since we went to the theater, to the movies, I thought that this was so very adorable. So there they are eating popcorn. It looks like <laughs> Gus is gonna <laughs> shove popcorn in his little hat. I thought that that was just so adorable. And then last, but certainly not least, have old timey director, Goofy. How amazing does he look? I love this version of him. It looks very Disney California Adventure-esque to me, a very old Hollywood, and I just thought it was so perfect to add to my Goofy pin. Let's move on to Walt's barn, Carolwood. Um, it's the birthplace of Imagineering. It's also open to the public and it's in Griffith Park in Los Angeles, which Griffith Park is also uh, where Walt's carousel is, which we got to visit, but unfortunately it's currently closed down. So we actually didn't get to see it running, which was a little bit sad. And so Walt's barn, I'm going to read you this little excerpt from this map. So it kind of explains everything. In 1950, Walt Disney built a one eighth scale live steam railroad at his residence in Holmby Hills, California. He operated the Carrollwood Pacific Railroad for family and friends until 1953 when he shifted his energies into creating a magical place where families could have fun together, Disneyland. The CPRR Center of Operations was a replica of the barn from the Disney Farm in Marceline, Missouri. The Carrollwood Barn served as Walt's workshop where he spent many hours building miniatures and model trains. In 1999, Walt Disney's family moved it to 
the Los Angeles Live Steamers Railroad Museum, of which Walt was a founding member. Today, Walt Disney's Carrollwood Barn is a living showcase of his passion for railroading. Operated by a nonprofit Carrollwood Foundation, the barn is filled with trains of all scales. Many of Walt's personal items, tools are displayed, including workbenches he built himself. Guests also enjoy seeing the depot from animator Ollie Johnston's miniature railroad and our newest edition an original combine coach from the Santa Fe and Disneyland Railroad, which was so neat. And they even matched the paint perfectly, uh, which was really interesting. They told a whole story about it, which I believe is in the vlog. Walt Disney's Carrollwood Barn is open on the third Sunday of each month. So if you're visiting the third Sunday, it's open from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. with weather permitting. Admission and parking are free. So very cool. I will leave a link to Walt's Barn if you want more information um, or if you'd like to watch the vlog, it is in there. And so it says Walt Disney's Carrollwood Barn, Griffith Park, California. Tin uh, reads the same as the pin does. This was a gift from our lovely guide, Sammy and Michael. I thought this was way too adorable to pass up. This is the little Christmas ornament that says Carol Wood, Walt Disney's barn. And it's got Santa Claus riding an old steam train. And I just thought that this was so, so very precious. And I, um, since we went there during Christmas time, I thought it was a nice little moment from the barn. Next, we're gonna move on to Jim Henson Studios. They didn't really have a lot to purchase at Jim Henson. It says, it's a good life, enjoy it, Jim Henson. The Jim Henson Company, Hollywood, California, and this is their actual lot, also known as the Charlie Chaplin lot. And so that is where we were able to tour, and I got one for my friend Lucas. Um, I'm going to link a video that Lucas and I did together. He is a Muppets super fan, and I wanted to get him something. I actually felt a little bit guilty being there without him, to be honest with you. <laughs> and so um, I hope that the little memento that I I was able to get can make up a little bit for it since he uh, was not able to tour Jim Henson Studios as of yet. I know in his lifetime he will. I know he will. And I've got another item in this haul for Lucas. And we did a really fun video where we talked a lot about the Muppets and I interviewed him. Um, he's got an awesome Muppets collection page. I'll also link down below for you guys to check out if you are Muppets fans because it's definitely worth a peek. And then I got a little magnet from Tam O'Shanter, one of Walt and his Imagineer's favorite restaurants. This is a replica of the signage that is at um, Tam O'Shanter. While we were there, we were actually invited to the Company D family event. I want to say a very, very special thank you to Amy for inviting us. You are incredible. She's a long watcher of the channel and I um, we couldn't have gone there without you. Nikki and Terry had never been there before. Um, and so I've, I've actually been because of Amy before. So thank you for my second entry into the family and friends event. It's really kind of you to share that with me. Um, and I bought a couple of things. I got a lot of fig pins. I actually got three fig pins. So here is, oh my gosh, this Ariel fig pin is just Stunning. She's in her pink dress. She's so very sparkly. Oh my goodness. I just adore um, how she looks in this pin. She looks so very beautiful and the glitter in her dress is immaculate. Along those same lines, I, I couldn't get Ariel without getting Ursula, so I did get the Ursula pin. And these were $6.99, by the way. Uh, the fake pins and they're originally $24.99 and then I got Hortensia. So here is Hortensia. That is Oswald's girlfriend. She's a little kitty cat and she reminds me so much of Betty Boop. My husband loves Oswald and so we are starting a full pin board for him for Oswald. And you'll see a common theme here because here's another Oswald pin. And there is Oswald and Hortensia and it says Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. And Hortensia has a little flower, which I think is so cute. I also got this super cute pin set and this was $7. And I um, really, really liked this Cinderella 
portion. Um, I don't love the shoe pin. I'll probably use that as a trader, but I really liked this Cinderella pin. I do have a small Cinderella collection, specifically in her pink dress, but I loved the coloration and the stylization of this, and it really matches the colors that are in my craft room, which is where my Cinderella pin board will be. And so I decided to get this so I could um, split it up and uh, use one for trading and one for my collection. Now, I fell in love with this adorable new emo outfit. This was $1.99, originally $12.99, and this is the New Year's outfit. And it actually does say 2022, but I have a gold paint pin that I'm just going to paint over that and it should kind of blend in for the most part. But look how cute this is. There's a little vest and a bow tie and gold pants. I just think this is so fun. I definitely will be dressing up one of my new emos for New Year's and it will be in this outfit and I'm very excited to share that with you probably over on Instagram if you're interested in seeing that. <laughs> Or not. It's okay. I understand if you're not. Um, anyway, so next we're going to move on to general Disneyland items, things that I got from Disneyland, and then we will finish it out with Imagineering and Disney Studios. So I got two shirts. I fell in love with this shirt the last time I was at Disneyland last October. This is the tie-dye Pirates of the Caribbean shirt. It is so long. I have a love for George brand long t-shirts from Walmart. If you know, you know. I get a 3XL. It's a literal dress on me. I'm 5'10", and so for me, it's really hard to find things that are long enough. And I love how soft and how amazing and cheap those shirts are. I currently have two of them, and they're getting really old, and this reminded me so much of that shirt. The only, the, sh the George shirts, but the only difference is it's got a, a circular neck rather than a V neck. And also it doesn't have a tapered bottom. So the George shirts have a tapered bottom on the front and on the back. And this is just a straight shirt, but are we living? Nikki, Terry, and I all got this shirt. I, um, I was the OG girls. Okay. I got it first and then they followed. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's totally fine. I love, I love matching outfits. Um, and so here it is. It is so pretty. Look how lovely that shimmer is on the silver. It says Disney 100. Then it has the Disneyland emblem on the arm. And I got this in a 2X. It's really long. It's really big. It's really comfortable. And it was fairly inexpensive at $29, which I thought was a decent price for a t-shirt at Disney. Next at World of Disney, I ended up getting these Park Pals. Now these typically are supposed to go on your backpack. However, they do have stands that they can go on, but I have a very specific thing that I want to use them for and I'm very excited. I have a window in my craft room that is super duper tall. It has a shade that never gets used. It's always open because it's so high, but it has a ridiculously long cord because it's so high up. And it has two places where these guys could go. One at the bottom, which will probably put Gus because I just love Gus so much. And so he's my favorite. So I definitely want him to be in view. And then a couple of feet up, there is a knot where I will put Jacques. And I'm so very excited. My craft room has a large theme around the Cinderella sewing scene. And so these guys just felt right to get and they are brand new and so I was very excited to get them. Next I purchased a Magic Band Plus. They had a Christmas themed Magic Band for this year and I just love that the coloration on the on the back was black. I typically wear a lot of black and so I love that this was an option and I didn't realize now that Magic Band Pluses work with your account for both Disneyland and Disney World. I wish I would have known that before I left because 
I would have brought a magic band that I had from Disney World, but that's okay. Um, so I bought a new magic band so I could have one while I was there. I got a couple of a super cute glow cubes. I got the peppermint as well as this little jingle bell. Isn't this adorable? I love that it has like color changing lights inside. This one also has a lot of different settings as well, but aren't these the cutest? I thought they would make really good fillers for my Christmas displays. I got a little straw topper that happens to be Olaf and Olaf also, oh, oh no, he used to light up. He no longer lights up. That's okay. I probably just need to change his little battery if that is even a possibility. I have no idea how I would do that. So here is Olaf sitting on presents. This actually came with, it was supposed to be um, screwed on to a bottle of soda or a bottle of water and I screwed it onto my Dasani <laughs> Disney water. It had a straw, but I don't know where it went. But anyway, so there was a straw with it and then I was eating a churro and watching the parade and living my best life. And that is how you're supposed to do Disney. So it really enhanced my parade experience. And so I'm glad to add him to my little Christmas collection. I have a new set called Metal Magic. And this is a silhouette of Eric and Ariel in the Kiss the Girl scene, $19.99. This is a limited edition of 2,500. This pin set is called Turnover Time. Nikki got one that was Phil from Hercules. I, of course, had to go home with Sebastian. It actually has a working little hourglass. This one features blue sand. It's got a really cool coral background with seaweed, and um, Sebastian is just kind of chilling at the top. This one was $21.99 and a limited edition of $2,500. I got two pirate's pins. So I have a pirate pin board at work. Um, we've always called ourselves the merry band of pirates at work and I think it's just such a cute and fun theme and I have a lot of fond memories affiliated specifically with pirates, deep sea fishing out of Southeast Alaska. And it's, yeah, I've got a, <laughs> a lot of very fond memories. So I found two different pins that I didn't have in my collection. These are open edition. I believe they were $9.99 each. This one says here comes trouble and it is Pluto and he is Keith. So he is the dog at the end of the ride. And if you don't know, everyone on the channel calls him Keith. I know that that's not his name. I think his name is Poochie or something like that, but we call him Keith because he's keeper of the keys, my friends. Ever interested in getting a really cool Keith t-shirt that is designed by Brandy at Second Star Lane who has an incredible Disney themed small shop and she also does other things of course as well. Lots of fandom and nostalgia inspired things. She's an extremely talented artist and she put together a beautiful Keith design and it is linked down below in the merch section um, underneath. I believe it's underneath the description down below. We have this I Never Surrender with Minnie Mouse as red from the ride, which I thought was so very adorable. And again, open edition pin. I love these stocking pins. I got two of them from Disney World this year because they had Gerald and they had Ray and I fell in love and that will be featured in my background video um, when I do my Christmas background video. However, Chip and Dale are the theme for the Grand Californian and it's got all the beautiful redwood trees, acorns, Chip and Dale, and also these pins, they lock. Hang on, give me just a moment. Oh. So you can actually hide them down below or you can pop them out and it looks like Dale's going, <laughs> which is so very cute. But I like to lock them out so you can see the character because I mean, that's kind of the point of the pin, right? And so this is gonna go with my stocking pin board. This pin is really cool. It's a limited edition of 4,000, which I don't feel is very limited, but it's actually got wood inlaid in the pin itself. And because we stayed at the Grand Californian and everything is so very rustic there, it just felt right to have this type of pin. It also has this really cool ribbon element that makes it look like an ornament. And I just feel like everything is so ornament themed this year. And it just seems to make sense to have this pin. I thought it was really cool to see Beast and Belle in their really neat winter outfits. You don't often see them like that. And I thought that that was really cool. This one was $19.99. I got two Haunted Mansion Holiday pins, and if you know anything about me, you know I love Haunted Mansion Holiday. It's the best overlay in all of Disney. So here's the pin. It's a limited edition of 3300, and it has Jack and all of his different faces. It says Haunted Mansion Holiday 
on the pin itself. Such a cool and unique pin. I love the bats in the background and I love that you can choose the jack that you want featured. And then that one, both of these pins are $19.99, both limited edition of $3,300, and this is Haunted Mansion Holiday with all of the busts that sing Grim Grinning Ghosts, but in addition, we have Santa Jack, which is so fun, and they the busts are a pin-on-pin -pin element, and they are three-dimensional cast, which is so neat. I love that detail for this pin. It was a very, very cool pen. I also got a very neat limited edition Small World pen because the facade of Small World during the holidays is so gorgeous. It is insanely beautiful. So here is the pin. It's got a lot of beautiful glitter detail. It's also got a toy soldier and a gingerbread man. And on the Santa hat on the clock, it has multiple different ways to say it's either happy holidays or merry christmas i can't i i don't actually know um but i just thought that that was so cool and what a neat theme to incorporate all of the different languages this one was 19 dollars 99 i love this pin this is a limited edition of 3000 it was 19 dollars, and it is the new animation of goofy which i call crackhead goofy i don't know if that's a very kind thing to say but he looks a little crazy and I absolutely love how he looks. He put together a ridiculous package that he's gonna give to someone whom he loves very much. I'm sure maybe Mickey. <laughs> um, but you can see all the beautifully wrapped presents behind him and then his wild, a goofy wrapping, which I thought was so cute. I do have a presents pin board and he's gonna go on the presents board. Let's move on to Walt Disney Studios. We must start with the official VIP tour. This was a pin that was given to us by Sammy and Michael, our guides, and this was the original Disney Studios sign that was um, at the studio's lot, which was really cool. This is something you can only get if you do the official VIP tour. It's a very, very special pin, and I'm very honored to have it. The next item I got is, I got this for my husband. This is a little lanyard and it was $2.99. It features Oswald. Oftentimes you'll see employees wearing these. They're just a black rope lanyard and then you'll see like their credentials hanging off of them. Um, but it typically has some sort of character on it. This is Oswald in a top hat. It's a very, very cute lanyard. I'm going to place this on his Oswald pin board and it was a smoking deal at $2.99. Speaking of lanyards, I couldn't uh, pass up I couldn't pass up a My Girl Ariel. I thought that this was such a unique pin. The coloration of it is very, very different and I don't have anything like it on any of my pin boards. And so I'm going to hang this from my mermaid pin board. I have a very, very large Little Mermaid pin collection and I have a mermaid specific board. Now I do think that this was for Halloween and you'll probably notice it looks like the clam is a jack-o'-lantern, which would make sense as to why there's like some neon green details and orange details in this lanyard. It's not a pin, I shouldn't say that. I don't really know what to call it though. It like, it's a bolo tie basically <laughs> and it connects to the lanyard. So whatever you call that but I'm calling it kind of like a pin because that's what it looks like. That one was $18.95. This one is so beautiful. This is Pocahontas and it's $16.95 and it's got her and Miko and they're sharing some blueberries. Oh, and this is, is much easier to show than the other one. On the back, it says Disney Employee Center. That's the only place that you can get, one of the only places that you can get these types of lanyards. Um, and so I 
don't know why I got this other than I thought that it was really, really beautiful. I don't actually have, I have one other Pocahontas pin, maybe two. Um, and so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. Maybe this is going to go in my craft room. I'm not 100% sure, but it was so unique to see Miko and Pocahontas in an alternative pose doing something cool. So I just couldn't pass it up. Next, we have an employee center limited edition 400 for the Disney 100. And this happens to be my favorite, one of my most favorite villains ever. This is Lotso, and he's got kind of a stained glass element behind him, and this beautiful framing, and then the Disney 100 on the top. This one was $24.99. Excuse me, $24.95. And this next pin was $38.95, and I have a small, I think I might have almost all of the Soul, Pixar Soul uh, pins. But this one is so beautiful and I'm so sad the backer card got damaged on its way home, which is okay, but you can see it says Disney Employee Center, but look how stunning this pin is. So the wreath in the back features trumpets, piano keys, it features uh, Mr. Mittens, the cat. It also features 22. And of course, it's got Joe Gardiner there and Joe as his soul kind of near his shoulder. I thought that that was a really cool element. This one is a limited edition of 400. Next pin is also a limited edition of 400 and I love this pin so much. I'm gonna take it out of its beautiful packaging. The packaging for it looks like this. It says the Walt Disney Studios Burbank, California. And it's what I would like to call their skyline of their studios. And you know, honestly, I just don't know if I'm ever gonna visit there again. And I just really, loved this pin and I thought it was so beautiful. And here it is. So it's got the iconic water tower. You've also got the animation building. You can see the Disney Legends statue here. The iconic street sign that's Mickey Avenue and Disney Drive. We got to take our pictures in front of that, which was really neat. And so I'm so excited to have this as part of my collection because I think that this is such a unique jumbo pin. It's a very, very rare. And I also love that it's very pastel colors. It kind of matched how that area looked. And um, so yeah, just really excited to have this, really excited to have the opportunity to go and do all of these amazing things. The next item I bought was actually a Disney Christmas ornament. Now this is an ornament that came out for the Disney 100. Now I thought this was so cool. So this is Mickey and it says Mickey Mouse Walt Disney Studios and I thought that it was just so neat. It has the Disney 100 emblem at the top. This was $26.99. I went ahead and bought it just to commemorate the, us being at Walt Disney Studios on the 100th. I thought that that was so perfect to have kind of everything all encompassed into one Christmas ornament. And so that is gonna go right on my tree in just a few minutes. For Disney Studios last, but certainly not least, I just really loved the original sign that we got for our pin. And so I wanted it in t-shirt form. It says Walt Disney Productions. What's really cool is it does say Disney Employee Center. And then here is the tag for that. This was $51.98. It's a typical crew neck. It's very long, which I love. And it is also very, very soft. Walt Disney Imagineering. I got this really cool canvas tote bag to hold all of my purchases. And we're going to start with something that I have for Lucas. Lucas, if you're watching, you may want to skip ahead a little bit. Um, this is the Muppet Studio exclusive, and I actually tried to get this for him. Um, this was a D23 release um, that was for the Dr. Teeth. Oh my gosh, I'm going to mess it up. It was for something specific for the Dr. Teeth release, um, but they commemorated all of the Muppets, but this one was specifically for Floyd. This is a hat that's kind of like a military style hat. And I did try to get this Muppets Mayhem. There it is. 
and I tried to get this for him and was unsuccessful to get it through D23 and I thought maybe we would run into it at some point and luckily we did at the Mickey's of Glendale store which I was so very thankful for so just so you know everything that I'm showing you is at uh, or from Mickey's of Glendale which is Walt Disney Imagineering's store that's on their uh, campus everything was sorcerer themed and it just felt right I got this really super cute little keychain he was a $14 I think he looks so cool it, they're celebrating Walt uh, Walt Disney Imagineering 70th anniversary and so this is part of their 70th anniversary collection and look at the tag Walt Disney Imagineering isn't that so cool also look Mickey tail <laughs> he's got a little tail under there oh my gosh we love him is he precious oh my gosh I love him. Now, this was so cool. I love this hoodie so much. First of all, embossed Sorcerer Mickey. Is that the coolest? And then it has what I call second star to the rights in the hood. The string says Walt Disney Imagineering. Is that so cool? Oh my gosh, I love this so much. This was $59.99. And then to celebrate the 70th, I got the 70th emblem Walt Disney Imagineering t-shirt. And it's in this really lovely gray. And this was $27.99. And then I went a little bit crazy in the <laughs> Imagineering store. If you know me, you know I love arts and crafts and all things creative and all things just art related, I guess, in general. I lost it when I saw these pencils. They are pencils, but they are also paint brushes. And it says Walt Disney Imagineering, and you can choose to sharpen them or not. I actually may use them as paint brushes at some point, but I do have this really amazing organizer in my craft room, and these are gonna go in there because how cool is it to have Walt Disney Imagineering paint brushes? Like, I'm set for life. I'm set for life. I'm so happy about that. Way too happy about that. <laughs> they had lanyards for Duffy and Friends that were 50% off. And so I got these guys. Gelatoni, Stella Lou, and Olu Mel. Super duper cool pencil that says Walt Disney Imagineering that features Sorcerer Mickey. Again, it's gonna go in my craft room, maybe go to my office. And then these are just your typical Disney paint brushes. Like when you think of Disney paint brushes, this is what I think of. So it says Walt Disney Imagineering, and then you twist the end and it becomes a pin. And I just, love these um mickey's magical map they have these in large form and um during that show they would like flip them around and i've always wanted to make a life-size version of this and so maybe this will be my model for making one of those large mickey's magical map uh, mickey and his magical map i can't remember the exact name of the show uh, but the one of their paintbrushes that they dance with in that show because i've always wanted to do that and like hang it in my craft room someday when i get spare time it's gonna happen this pin is the walt disney imagineering 70th anniversary pin this is an open edition but it's again you can only purchase it at mickey's of glendale so it's very very difficult to get a hold of unless you know someone that works there or go on a tour. This pin was $24.95 and I think it is so beautiful. This is a limited edition of $2.50. It is a Walt Disney Imagineering exclusive. It does say that on the back of the pin and it has Goofy in all sorts of a different um, faces and expressions, and oh my gosh, it's so adorable. Also, purple is my favorite color, and you don't often see him affiliated with any sort of colors that aren't primary colors, or orange, or green, or you know, something that's very basic color, so I love seeing the purple. It just makes me so happy, and I love this pin so much. 
Also had a Saludos Amigos pin. This is one of their film strip pins. Again, a limited edition of 250, which is pretty incredible. There's Donald Duck as well as Jose. And also there is Goofy riding a horse. Such a cool pin. This is also a see-through panel on the film strip itself. Gonna go perfectly on my Goofy pin board. That was long. <laughs> if you made it to the end, please put a gold star emoji down in the comments because you earned a gold star for making it this far. I would love to know what your favorite item was from this haul or if you have been to any of those very special places um, that we got to visit during this trip. I seriously had so much fun hanging out with you. I cannot wait to start this vlog series very, very soon. <sighs> Guys, I have talked enough. Thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. Be sure to subscribe for the vlogs coming very soon. And and I will see you guys in the next one. TTFN. Bye.